right, here we go. Sunday night Knicks. Knicks lose a tough one in the Mile High City, 111 to 105. CP from Knicks Fan TV, my man Alex Wolf returns. Al, I, I thought you were coming back for a W, man. It, it was a valiant effort. Knicks down by 16 coming into the second half. Uh, a defensive uh, uh, effort that was phenomenal. You know, the, the best of its season. The, the, the Knicks just could not pull this one out, man. 111-105. What would you see out there tonight, man? Yeah, I mean, they certainly never quit. You know, there was uh, there are times this season where, you know, even in the, the last Nuggets game where if the Knicks had gotten down by by 20 points, you just assumed they were cooked, Facts. you know, and – and that's just not the case anymore. I don't know. This is, you know, there's been multiple games now, the last two games in particular, where they've gone down big and they've come back. And, you know, this one, they took the lead late in the game and just ultimately couldn't put it away. Uh, but I thought they showed great fight, you know, and, and good adjustments. Uh, they came out, you know, looking like we're, they were wearing cement shoes in the first half, especially on defense. You know, it just seemed like everybody was a step slow. And, you know, Denver was running them off the floor. Um, the fast breaks were absolutely killing the Knicks, you know, and then uh, towards the end of the game there, you know, and really for the whole second half, it helped that Marcus Morris kind of exploded in the third to kind of bring it right. back within punching distance. And then, you know, they were getting stops. They were playing the passing lanes well. Uh, I just thought they made a lot of uh, crucial little adjustments that, that made things work for them. And, you know, I think that's a credit to Mike Miller. You know, it's, it's obvious that he's, having an impact he's making timely timeouts um i think his rotations make enough sense um you can maybe argue tonight that down the stretch things kind of fell apart a little bit when uh frank and taj got subbed out yeah. and you know and he didn't make the end game adjustment there with a couple minutes left to try to preserve the game but i think that he just went with who he thought should have been the closers and like there was no debating that like alfred payton had a good night Mitch had a pretty good second half. You know, I, I didn't have a huge problem with him sticking with those guys and being like, all right, you know, let's see if they can do it. But all in all, good. I mean, it yeah. was uh, very encouraging all around. You know, I don't think there's – other than the the Portland game and even that one, there was, you know, silver linings to be found. Yeah. I don't think there's been a single game in the Miller era that I haven't walked away being like win or loss, okay, that, you know, this was – this is a good game. It's it's good sides, man. This coach is doing his homework out there. He's very prepared. I'm very curious to see what's on that notepad that he's got walking around, <laughs> coming out of the timeouts with. But um, listen, I thought, you know, once again, the third quarter effort, it was Marcus Morris, man. 16 points in that quarter. Uh, he hadn't had much going in the first half. The defense was phenomenal. Frank found his, he drank his confidence uh, vitamins, his confidence juice tonight. <laughs> You know what I mean? That, that boy yeah. Frank found his nuts tonight. He was he was all over it on the defensive end. Alfred Payton, ten points, ten dimes. Um, you know, I, I thought I thought the guards were solid, man. I think the turning point of the game was the fact that you know the Knicks had a five point lead, and with three minutes to go, the Nuggets were able to cut that down. I think Jokic hit a three to put mm -hmm. them up two. And for, from that point, we just we could not buy a basket, man. We could not get a basket between, you know, I thought that to give credit to the Nuggets, they, they played good defense. Um, they took Morris out of the game. And, you know, we had a lineup out there with Peyton, RJ, Morris, Mitch, and Randall. And we just, we just couldn't score. We, we could not score to, to get back in this game. And, and, you know, just having that lack of a go-to guy, even though Morris has kind of been that guy, you know, once they went away from him, it, it was either Julius or Bust, basically. Yeah, yeah, more or less. Um, you know, and and it was a bust. <laughs> yeah, bust. Uh, I mean, he uh, Randall still is a work in progress to me. I think. Um, I think his shot selection is getting better. Yeah, but I don't think it's perfect yet. Like mm -hmm. on a night like tonight, I felt like he should have abandoned the three a lot earlier than he did, uh, just because he's very streaky. You know, it's either going in or it's not. Mm -hmm. And tonight, it it was not. And he put up what was it one six for six? Attempts? Yeah, one, one for, for six, six. I think. Yeah. And and his first made three was his first basket of the game, and the Knicks' first basket of the game, if I remember correctly. So yes, you know, it was it, it just wasn't his night from three. He wasn't abandoning the net. Um, he even some of his takes that went in, you know, he made the shot that put the Knicks ahead late in the game, and and I even tweeted from P and T about that. I was like. You know, you want to get on him because this was 
kind of a bad shot, but it went in and it just gave the Knicks the lead. So it's kind of hard to hate on it. But, you know, he, he took it was going right and then went up with his left hand for a jumper. And it was, it was just kind of a mess of a shot. Yeah. And I think he's still unlearning some tendencies from Fisdale um, and, and unlearning some of the, the unnecessarily large role that Fisdale signed him. Uh, but, you know, it, even from him, I, I think we're seeing some good stuff. Yeah. I, I think we are seeing some improvements. You know, I, I saw people in the chat were really trashing them and, and uh, listen, there was some, certainly some moments in the fourth. I was just like, slow down, slow down. There was that one possession where it seemed like he had it for an eternity and, and he was just stumbling and bumbling and ultimately he got fouled. But, Sometimes, you know, when you look, conversely, you look at RJ, who just doesn't have it going, you know, from the field. It's kind of like you got to live and die with Randall out there right now if if you're not going Mars. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah, no, I feel you. It, sometimes it feels that way, you know. Like, it would certainly help. I, I may as well just get this out of the way early because I'm going to I'm gonna complain about this at some point during this show. Mm-hmm. It, it would really help if RJ Barrett would get foul calls. Like, oh, man. I, I cannot believe the amount of times he gets mugged man. on a daily basis anymore and doesn't get a foul call. Tonight, I mean, he got he got practically clotheslined by, I think it was Plumlee and yeah. uh, Jeremy Grant yeah. on his one it was drive. a scary and, fall too, man. Yeah, bad fall and, and, you know, doesn't get a call. He had one earlier in the game where he, he missed his, I think it was a reverse and – uh, he got his own rebound. Jokic hacked him, and he didn't get a call there. I mean, it, I think that RJ is closer than we think to being a guy that you can count on late in games for his ability to draw fouls. True. But he can't draw the fouls if they're not called. You know what I mean? So I, I think the, the days of living and dying by Randall and Morris hopefully will be numbered once RJ can, I guess, get the clout necessary in the in, you know NBA refereeing circles to actually get foul calls. Because, no love. Yeah, he's he's generating good looks, you know, getting to the inside and stuff. And, and, you know, that's that's been what he's had to lean on lately because his shot, you know, from mid range and from three have been kind of struggling lately. Yeah. So he's had to really rely on his ability to get inside. And he's been doing that, but he's been getting just hack city every time he's in there. I, I don't know if he just has to flop more or. What's going to play better with the refs? But, yeah, something, something's got to change there. Cause, no know. love from, from RJ, from the Zebras, man. I, I couldn't take it. I couldn't, especially on that dunk attempt. I couldn't take it. Uh, you, you mentioned Frank and Taj before. It seems like the two of them have these good games, like, in tandem. You ever notice that? Like, when, when one has it going, the other one typically has it going on a particular night. You see a lot of pick and rolls being ran um, um, with, with Frank and Taj. I like how Taj was really aggressive in the third quarter, just defensively. Him and Plumlee were going at it. You know, him and Jokic had, had a couple moments there. Um, definitely like what they gave us. I thought Kev, I like the action that Miller was running from Kev early in the game. I think trying to get him involved early, running him off of some screens. Uh, get him in some high percentage shots in the paint. I, I like Kev's action out there early tonight as well. Yeah, yeah, I thought Knox was great. Uh, his, I think it was his first, maybe his first play of the game after he got in. At least I think it was his first offensive play. He got the ball, uh, you know, up at the top, and he took. Uh, forget who it was off the dribble, but he took. It was a four, and you know he was playing against a a power forward and took him right off the dribble. It might, was it Plumley? I think they had Plumley and Jokic out there at the mm-hmm. same time at that time, and. Uh, took Plumlee off the dribble and, you know, just slammed it home because he's just, he's that much quicker than a power forward or in that case, a center. They were kind of running the two center lineup, but either way, like it was, it was a good play by him and, you know, it kind of set the tone for his night. Um, you know, he was, I think playing well, he was about as engaged as you can ever hope to see him. Hey, on the defensive that's it. End. That's it. Um, and you know, if, if he could do that and then be effective on offense, you know, like he was tonight, then he can generally be a positive player. Uh, I don't think that he's a, a guy that, you know, necessarily is is going to be a, a superstar or anything. But I think that there, you know, are ways to make him a plus player. In it. And it starts with getting him in situations to succeed on offense because that's where he's going to give you, you know, his actual value. Yeah. And, and that was a good job by Mike Miller trying to get him involved early. Uh, my guy Sean Shepard had hit me up on the gram and he's saying, you know, uh, Fizz really wasn't doing that earlier this season uh, like he was last in, in trying to, you don't get Kev's contributions out there early. Just get him engaged, right? They always talk about his motor and, and trying to get him involved in the game early. And I, I like what Mike Miller did to try to kind of get his spirits up and, and get him engaged. Uh, another DMP for DSJ tonight. Just two mm-hmm. nights in a row. I don't mind it. What about you? I, I don't mind it at all. I think we need to keep keep the point guard rotation to the two. 
why would we care yeah. at this point? You know what I mean? Like, yeah. I, I, I hate to say it because I'm a DSJ guy, like going, you know, all the way back to the, the draft initially, you know, I, I liked DSJ. Um, and, you know, I, I had high hopes for him coming into this year, but he hasn't earned his playing time. I mean, period. You know, you can't I, – I like that Miller – is trying to establish a rotation and not just kind of throw everybody out there any given night. Like mm-hmm. tonight he played 10 guys and that's, that's a rotation. That's what you're supposed to do. And, you know, it, it, to varying degrees of minutes and stuff, but everybody played, you know, decent minutes and, you know, Dotson, you can maybe argue could have played a little more. He only played uh, seven minutes, but yeah, he was a minus 15. <laughs> you know, I guess there's right. something that Miller was seeing out there that he wasn't liking out of Dotson. Um, but, you know, other than that, like, you know, I I can't see playing Dennis Smith just for the sake of playing Dennis Smith right I now. I agree. He's not, he's not worth the time right now. Get him those development reps, I guess, in practice. You know, get him what he needs there. I, I said maybe, put him in the G League, man. Or put him in the G put League. Put him in the yeah, G League. Yeah, hey. You know what? I, I, this is a whole thing. I had a I had a whole rant about this. It, the first time that DSJ was playing like crap, um, before he kind of had that mini resurgence that started during the Dallas game and mm-hmm, all that. Mm-hmm. Um I had a little mini rant on Locked on Knicks about this, about how the stigmas around the G League need to start going away because it, it shouldn't be looked at as like a punishment right. or something to degrade players. You know what I mean? It's not it's not a bad thing. I, and I do think that DSJ could benefit from it um, because he just needs somewhere to get his confidence back, somewhere to, you know, run some actions and, you know, just rediscover himself. I don't yeah. know. Like he needs, cause he's, when he's out there, he just doesn't look comfortable in his own skin half the time. Um, and it sucks because he's normally a very explosive player. I mean, we saw last year when he first came to the Knicks, he's, he's extremely quick getting to the rim, yeah, and, you know, has these great moves under the rim to contort his body and get layups up and stuff. And yeah, you know, eventually I, I want to see him back, but you know, there's no point wasting actual game minutes no on point. him when the Knicks have looked kind of competitive. True. Lately, you know? True. It's like, if it was a blowout tonight, I'm sure Smith would have gotten a couple minutes. But, yeah. you know, it, it wasn't. They turned it around, and it's like, well, why would why would we put Dennis Smith in there now? He's not going to help us continue this turnaround. He's going to probably hemorrhage a couple points away. And Facts. Can't really afford that in a close game. So. Facts, man. Absolutely, man. Salute to everybody in the chat once again. Hit that thumbs up button for you boys. CP, my man, Alex Wolf in the building. Let's go to the phones out. Danny from Washington Heights. What's going on, Danny? Hey yo, I'm in a good I'm in a good mood tonight, CP. How, how you feeling? Are you in a good mood? We lost, man. Are you 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 you're in the moral victories nah, uh, nah, crew today? It's a it, listen, man. It's just like you just said. It's a moral victory. Let me tell you why. My man Frank Nitty, Frank Nigalina, yo, thirteen <laughs> points on four for six, on four steals, on five assists, man. This is what I wanted him to be the whole time. I don't care, Mike Miller. It looks like Mike Miller is figuring out what to do with the young players. He's using Taj Gibson well. He's been using Randall a lot better than Fizdale has been using. The defensive rotations look a lot better. The team is more cohesive. We're not getting blown out by 40 anymore, which is doing the thing we usually did before, which is losing in the fourth quarter again. Man, life is good right now. I don't care. I don't care. We can lose every game like this. Quality loss. Daddy's going for the quality loss. Okay, okay. I mean, you know, we, we talked about Frank um, yesterday. I was on a Twitter conversation with Frank. Somebody's like, what's going on with Frank? I, you know, we, we know the story with Frank, Al. He just, he, he's got to take those confidence vitamins, man. If he's not taking mm-hmm. it, he's got to bring it every night, man. A- and the story. Even, yeah, I don't even necessarily know that it's 100% confidence. Like, some nights he just doesn't have it. You know what I yeah. mean? It, but, yeah, there's certainly nights where he he looks like he didn't take his confidence vitamins. Like he didn't have the Michael secret stuff in Space Jam or whatever. You know what I mean? Like, you know, some nights he comes out and he just comes out blazing, you know, and, and we saw that I think in the last game as well. Um, And the shot just wasn't falling as much last game, right? but he came out aggressive. And, you know, I I think that Miller told him to do that. And, you know, it's just, I feel like it's something where you're going to constantly have to like be hitting him with the cattle prodder his whole career and be like, Hey, Hey, Frank, like, turn up. On, let's you turn, turn up. up. Let's go. Let's go. Yeah. Like, you could do this, man. Like yeah. you, you actually have these abilities. Um, but tonight he was he was on and, and he was shooting well too. I mean, so it's, it was like the total package. He was showing confidence. He was shooting well, and that started opening up other parts of the game for him. He had maybe one of my favorite, uh, uh, low key, one of my favorite Nick passes of the season. Oh to, man, Gibson, that was beautiful. This beautiful gorgeous pass. wrap around. Beautiful pass. pass. Yeah, around two defenders into Taj Gibson, streaking mm-hmm. for a dunk behind Jokic. I mean, 
yeah, there was no shot that uh, Frank's defender Jokic had any chance at that ball because it was just like it took this perfect, beautiful path under both their hands. That, that was a beautiful right pass, man. I, I really thought we were gonna have that game, man. I really thought we were gonna have that game. Uh, Frank finished with thirteen points, uh, four times four steals. Four steals for Frank. I, I had a nice rip on uh, Jamal Murray and then took it in for a dunk. So, so that was good to see. Uh, two for four from downtown. So um, good good stuff from Frank there. Let's go to uh, Val from Jersey's up. Val, how you feeling tonight, man? 